Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Gray Board Gamer here with a playthrough of Assembly. Assembly is a small box game by Janice and Stu Turner from the company Ren Games. Let's get this box open and get it set up. The first step of the setup is selecting our roll card. The base game comes with seven and there are two additional ones here because I'm using the Glitches expansion. It may be hard to see from this far away, but the Li Yong and Luca cards in the bottom right hand corner had the little Glitches expansion symbol. These cards are double sided. It has the text describing the one time use ability. And then on the back, it's a graphical representation instead of the text, but it means the same thing. And if you're a regular viewer, you know I like to do things randomly whenever possible. We have nine different roll cards to choose from. I numbered them one through five, and then six through nine. We'll just roll the 12-sided die that comes with the game, ignoring anything above nine. And we have a three, so we will be using Anna. Anna is a technical expert, and her one-time ability is play two command cards consecutively. Note... Both commands must be verified. That must be verified part would occur in a two-player game, but I'm playing solo, so that note is irrelevant for this playthrough. Next we have the 12 modules that we need to mix up to create a random draw pile. Here we're seeing the back side of them. They all have the lock symbol on the back. And on the opposite side, we see the various symbols for the different modules in the game. The module draw pile is ready to go. Next we would select our malfunction cards that we're going to use for the playthrough. This first set of cards has nothing on it and they're blank so you can use them to learn the game. And then on the other side, plus all the other cards have actual malfunctions that will occur throughout the gameplay. And these cards are lettered A through G, which means again I will select randomly. We only have the seven options, so anything over seven we'll ignore. We got six, which means we will be using malfunctions lettered F. Here are the four malfunction cards for the letter F, and we'll go over them during the gameplay. And these are also from the Glitches expansion. I need to put these cards in position to organize our play area. The malfunction cards are placed in a clockwise fashion, 12 at the top, 3, 6, and 9 in those respective positions. Next, we'll take the 12 blueprint cards, shuffle them, and then place them starting at 12 around in a clockwise fashion to form our play area. Because I'm clumsy, I do not place these in one large stack. I place them in two stacks of six, and then I just start on the left and work my way down through that stack before I move on to the next one. But if you're not a klutz like me, you can put them in one tall stack. And we need to place our first module, and it gets placed randomly by rolling a 12-sided die. We have a five. And then placing the first module in the stack in position 5, which would be here in the transporter. And we actually got lucky and have the transporter symbol. That is an amazingly lucky start. That is the first time I've ever had the first module go to the correct bay on the initial turn. Here we have our deck of command cards. And before we start, we remove from this deck the Rotate Either Direction card, or one of the Rotate Either Direction cards, and the Wild card. We'll place these up here. We will be receiving those later in the game during a deck refresh phase. And we're playing with the Glitches expansion. We've already seen the additional cards in our Malfunctions and those two extra player cards, but there are also ten Glitch cards here. So we'll take the deck shuffle it, and draw two randomly. We will not look at them. And we will place one of the cards on top of each of the glitches. So we'll just put the wild here, and the rotate any there. 
Now, when these cards get brought into the game during the deck refresh phase, they'll also bring that glitch card in with them. And during the gameplay, when the glitch card gets drawn and revealed, we have to resolve it immediately. When playing solo, you remove these four cards. You remove one of the deploy and lock cards, one of the rotate any direction cards, one of the swap cards, and one of the move anti-clockwise cards. Once those are removed, it'll leave you with 10 cards in your command deck. Finally, we draw three cards to form our hand. We have a rotate clockwise, a swap, and a deploy or lock card. Objective. To win, you must escape. The only way to escape is to lock all 12 room modules in their correct bays as shown by the blueprints. Succeed before you run out of time and your ship will launch you to safety. Game End Conditions The game immediately ends when you win by correctly locking all room modules before time runs out. You lose the game immediately if you have refreshed the command deck twice, three cycles, and cannot draw a command card when you need to. You are on an orbital platform that assembles luxury spaceships. After a recent swarm of micro-meteorite impacts, a deadly virus has emerged and wiped out the entire staff. Luckily, you and a friend seem to have natural immunity, and now you must both escape to help create a vaccine before the virus reaches Earth. Unfortunately, the onboard computer has quarantined the station, and she is now venting all of the oxygen to ensure nothing survives. You know of a half-built spaceship on one of the assembly lines and have discovered a rather limited set of commands to complete it. As you try to make your escape by assembling the ship, the controls keep glitching. Does the computer know what you are trying to do? We are ready to begin our first turn. Let's take a quick look at the turn order player aid. Since we are playing the solo game, we will not do the inform or verify parts of the turn order. The first thing I want to do is get more modules in play. So I'll play my deploy slash lock card, and you can only do one of the actions on that, so I will deploy, which is always done randomly. We have a six. Six is here in the quarters, and we have the symbol for hydroponics, which doesn't do us any good, because in order to lock one of the bays down, it has to have the proper symbol in it. Since we used a card, move these over. We'll draw another card, and it is another deploy lock card. I try not to use the lock portion of the card until I have two things I can lock down to be a little bit more efficient. And we can't forget that Anna has the play two command cards consecutive ability, and that is a one-time use per game. Normally we can only play one, discard it, draw the next. With that ability we'd be able to play two back to back. So for now, I will deploy another module, which will go to bay number three. Bay number three is over here at the AI core, and we're going to get the symbol for the shuttle bay. Draw another card, and it's another deploy lock card, which there are six of these red deploy lock cards in the command deck, along with two of the swap cards, one of the clockwise rotate cards, and one either rotate. There's one up here also. There's two total, but this one does not come into play until we do our first deck refresh. We've deployed two modules, and I want to get another one out. That one will go to bay nine here in the VR lab. And we have the symbol for the elevator, which is right next to it. And now we have an either rotate card. Now we have to make a choice because we have to use one of these three. We can't deploy or lock because we don't have a card in our hand. And if we rotate, it's going to move the transporter out of there. So I don't move my transporter out. I will play a swap and swap the quarters with the VR lab. Draw my next card, and it is a deploy and a lock. We've deployed three, 
So let's deploy another one. That's going to bay 11, which is here where the hydroponics need to be. And we'll get the symbol for the VR lab. And that works out pretty good if we can get a swap card. But we did not. We got a deploy and a lock. I will do a rotate. And I'll play my either rotate card. That way I can go in the anti-clockwise direction. And when you play a rotate, you can rotate one or two spaces. And when you rotate, everything has to move. So I'll choose to move two in the anti-clockwise direction. And I'll start here with the AI core. Move it two. Same with the transporter. The elevator symbol will move two. The hydroponic symbol moves two. And our AI, or sorry, our VR lab will move two. And now we have the VR lab matching and the shuttle bay matching. Let me draw another card, and it's a deploy lock. And I do want to lock these down, so I will play my lock, and you can lock one or two. I'll start here with the shuttle bay. You do that by flipping the card over and locking that bay in place. Then I'll do the same here with the VR lab which will cause a malfunction. And on that card, the nine, it says we have to rotate all modules in even bays, three spaces in a clockwise direction, which will only affect one because these modules are in bays three and seven, but we do have one in bay four and it's gonna move three in a clockwise direction. One, two, three. It cannot go into a space where there one already exists. So you continue clockwise whenever you run into either a locked bay or an occupied bay. So the elevator symbol will move into the engineering bay. And we'll draw our last card, which is a swap. And in this instance, I will use Anna's play two command cards consecutively ability. And I'll flip her card to the icon side so I know that it's used up and I can't use it for the rest of the game. First I'll play rotate clockwise and I'll choose to rotate one. And I will take the elevator symbol there because it has to skip over the locked VR lab. And that module will move one along with the module here. Move one step closer to the transporter. Then I'll play my lock card and lock one bay down, and that will be the elevator. At this point, since we cannot draw another card, we have to refresh the deck. The first deck refresh brings in the any rotate into play and is added to the deck. And we'll turn these over because we're also going to add the glitch that was under there and we don't know what it is. So we'll shuffle those to create our new draw deck. Our new draw deck is ready, but the rule book states, unfortunately, in the time it takes you to refresh the command deck, the computer causes a glitch on the assembly line. You must scramble all unlocked blueprints. We only have the three locked down, so everything else will get scrambled. So we'll move the modules that are not locked off because they'll stay in position. And we'll gather up all of the cards in unlocked bays. These cards will now get shuffled and we will redistribute them now, starting at 12 and working our way around again. And that is just great luck. The transporter ended up right where the transporter module is at. And another amazing bit of luck. The hydroponics ended up right where it needs to be. That was unbelievable. Because these will move right back on and they are already in place. That is crazy. Let's back these up a little bit, make everything look a little neater. And we can draw up. We have a deploy lock and we have a glitch. All players must return their cards to the command deck, shuffle it, and then each player draws a number of cards equal to the number they returned. That's unfortunate because when a 
glitch is played, it gets discarded immediately, but you do not add a card in its place. So I am going to return these two cards to the deck, shuffle it, and now I will only draw two, because that's what I had to return to the deck. And we got our lock, our deploy lock back. That's what we have, two deploy locks. I'll go ahead and move this on top. Since it's not so tall now, we have just the one stack. And I will play and lock two down. We'll lock the hydroponics and we'll lock the transporter. And now when we draw, we'll draw two cards to get back up to our hand size of three. And that's all we have is deploys and locks. Well, we're going to deploy because there's nothing out there. This is going to go to module seven. Seven is here in medical and we have the security symbol. We have an any rotate. We definitely want to get some more modules out. So we'll deploy again to bay number three. That's the AI core, and we have the AI core symbol. We have another deploy lock card. If we could just get the security camera up there, but we can't move it without moving the AI core. So I will deploy to bay 10. Bay 10 is the elevator, so it'll continue clockwise to security. And that is the symbol for quarters. And we have a swap available. And I will use, yes, I will use the swap to swap the medical and security modules. And I'll put the security in the proper spot. We have an any rotate. Now we have two of them. I want to lock things down when I can. So I'll use that to lock two. I'll lock down security and we'll lock the AI core, but that will cause a malfunction on card number three. It says to execute the card from the top of the command deck, then discard it. Refresh the deck if necessary. So whatever card this is, we have to execute it. It is going to be a swap. That is unfortunate and fortunate, I guess because we cannot swap because there's only one module out there and you can't swap with an empty space. So we lose that swap and now we have a deploy lock card. And I think that's the last one. I think so. We have the any, yes, because we haven't seen the single rotate one direction card yet. So I will rotate one anti-clockwise to put the quarters in place, draw, and there's the card I thought it was. And before we refresh our deck, I will use that to do a single lock action here in the quarters. Lock that down. And we will cause another malfunction. Swap your hand with an equal number of random cards from the discard pile, else discard one card. Well, we can do that, so we'll place our two Shuffle these, and the two we'll get will have a deploy lock doubled up on those. These will go back into the discard pile because they were swapped out. We can't draw, so we have to refresh the deck, which means the wild card will come into play, and another glitch. We need to shuffle these to create our final draw deck. And we also must shuffle the unlocked bays. And that didn't hurt us too much because we didn't have any modules out there that we had to worry about messing up the location. Let's draw a card. Now we have deploy and lock. We do have four modules left. We know that there are six of these cards in there, plus the wild now, so we might be in pretty good shape. So let's deploy bay 12, which is our medical bay. And we have the engineering symbol. Oh, we have a glitch. 
Next time you execute a rotate command, either discard two matching rotate commands or roll the die. On an even roll, rotate clockwise. On an odd roll, rotate anti-clockwise. Place this card up in front of you. So I don't forget it, I'll place it right here above Anna's card. And that was a glitch, so we don't draw a card to replace it. That's not going to hurt us too much, because we were just going to deploy anyway. To bay number one. Bay number one is locked, so we'll move to bay two. And have the research lab symbol there. Now we'll draw up two cards. We have a swap and a rotate any. Let's get these modules out there and deploy again. Bay 6. That's the research lab because the quarters is full. And we have the navigation symbol now. We have a deploy lock card. And I think we should just get everything out there and play another deploy. We don't need to roll a die because there's only one left. And that'll have our medical symbol. And we have a rotate. I will rotate anti-clockwise one, which will bring navigation here, medical there, research lab there, and engineering here, which means our navigation is now in the proper place. We have a swap. I will swap the research lab and medical modules. Now the research lab is in the proper spot. But we need a lock. So what I'll do is I will swap again, swapping these two. Now all four modules are in the right spot. We have our wild. We'll play the wild as a lock too. Lock down the research lab and lock the navigation. Draw and we got it. I believe that's what the final two cards were, were deploy locks, if I was keeping count properly. And we will immediately lock down two. We'll start with the engineering. Lock it down and then the medical will be our final one to lock down. We don't have to worry about the malfunction because once all 12 are locked, the game immediately ends when you win by correctly locking all room modules before the time runs out. And it looks like we had one card left, which was the deploy lock card, as I thought. Card 12 states, execute the card from the bottom of the command deck randomly then return it to the bottom of the deck, refresh the deck if necessary. Since everything's locked, executing this would not have done anything anyway, and it would have got returned right to where it was at. To see how we did, we look at our scoring card, and you get two points for each locked bay. We have locked all 12, so we'll get 24 points. If you were unsuccessful in locking all 12, you would get one point for each deployed but unlocked module. So if we still had something unlocked at the end of the game, we'd get one point for that. And you get one point for each card left in the draw pile. In this case, it's only one. So we have 25 points. And that is the perfect result. You've escaped in the nick of time. But was that the right thing to do? Have you just infected Earth with a deadly virus? Was the computer right to try and stop you escaping? The best score I've been able to achieve so far is 27, which is the ace level. That is the closest I've come to the top score of 30 or more, which seems quite difficult. Things would have to really fall into place for you to have all the bays locked and six cards remaining in the draw deck. But with the multiple roll cards available and the seven different malfunction decks, plus the glitches, which there are 10 of and you only see two per game, there's enough variety to keep trying to get that top score. I hope you enjoyed this playthrough of Assembly. This was a Kickstarter that I supported and has recently arrived and had a lot of fun doing several playthroughs and wanted to share it with you. Also, if you'd like to get your own copy, I believe they are available for pre-order now on the Ren Games website, which I'll put a link to in the description below. 
Also, they are developing a digital version on the Google Play and the uh, Apple Store. At the time of this filming, I think they are still in beta testing. You can go on and purchase it at a discount to be one of the testers. If you can afford it, support the smaller creators out there. Go to the website and order your copy. Go to the App Store of your choice. Check out the digital version and help these smaller companies that don't have the large amount of resources that the big board game companies have. Again, this is not a statement against those bigger companies. I have tons of their games too, but when you can, support your smaller creators out there. The game is easy to learn. The rulebook is streamlined. It's easy to follow along with step by step. The explanations are in here. I didn't have any other questions outside of the rulebook that I had to look up or ask about. The components are nice. The cards have the nice linen finish on them. They're a decent thickness. The tokens are wooden discs. They come unfinished. You have sheets of stickers that you have to put on. So if you're not good at that, be careful. I didn't have any problems with any stickers coming off the sheets improperly or ripping or anything like that. But these lock symbols on the back are clear stickers with the lock symbol on them. The back sides are opaque. You can you can't see through those. So when you're putting the lock symbols on, be careful that you don't get any dust or hair or anything like that underneath it because that's something you'll be able to see and you'll know which module it is. So be careful when you're putting those together. It's a fun little puzzle game that's quick to set up, quick to play, very enjoyable. So far I'm about 50-50. I win half and lose half. Thank you for watching and supporting these smaller game videos. Make sure you hit that like button, share where you can, support the small creators, and I'll see you in my next video.